Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with another replay from Sarmation. We're here with the wonderful Dawi today. They're going to be taking on their rivals, the Foul Dark Elves. So let's get straight to it. We've got two units of organ guns here, popping off some shots into the Dark Elves. We've also got, um, let's see, uh, Dwarf Warriors. Plenty of Dwarf Warriors to protect, some Longbeards, Dragonback Slayers, a Rune Lord leading the way, some Thunderers as well, of course, Dwarf Warriors, Miners up front, and some Gyros as well. For the Dark Elves, front line of Spears, got a second line of Crossbows, the uh, Dark Shards, we've got some Harkonnenth Executioners as well, Marathi up in the air, and the Dark Riders currently uh, trying to get up and around the flank to get on said Organ Guns, unfortunately... There are lots of dwarfs here in a protection position, and the organ guns are able to fire without too much uh, issue here. And they are going to do a significant amount of damage to these infantry units, especially like the uh, crossbowmen here, for example. Oof, absolutely brutal stuff. Blasting charges coming out, doing a bit of damage to these dread spears as well. Obviously, good to have a nice cheap unit, catch most of those, but still, they did take a lot of damage there. The uh, Dark Riders finally did manage to get in here and compromise one of the organ guns. You can see they did actually knock them off the piece momentarily, but Dark Riders really can't stand up to all this uh, heavy dwarf infantry. They're going to be chased off in just a moment. The organ gun's going to get back online. Meanwhile, this other organ gun continuing to pound away that unit of archers here. The Gyros had come in for a nice bombing run, but took a lot of Overwatch fire and having to pull away there. Marathi's going after them very aggressively. That does mean, though, that she's going to get a little bit exposed here to some gunfire from the Thunderers. But, uh, yeah, Dwarf Warrior is going to be moving in here. We've got just a general kind of melee engagement going here with Longbeards and Dwarf Warriors. Duking it out with Dread Spears. Obviously, Dread Spears aren't going to do too well here. But uh, with the support of this cart, obviously the... the uh, the, what is this called? The Altar. It does cause fear and terror. Anti-infantry armor piercing, of course, as well. We'll see how she does. Looks like she's able to break through some miners there, move on to the next line of Dwarf Warriors, but the Dark Shards are suffering pretty badly. The one unit just about offline. The Dark Riders are pretty much gone as well, which means these uh, organ guns are now completely free to fire in wherever they want. You can see Marathi's also taking a lot of damage here from various units. It looks like those Thunderers focus firing on her. And, the, yeah, the uh, organ guns starting to switch to other units of Dark Shards as well. So we'll see how this goes. The fact that the Thunderers and the, uh, the organ guns are all still online and completely healthy is really rough for the Dark Elves. We'll see. Um, looks like Marathi, not sure where she got off to, but uh, Rune Lord getting caught out here by the Death Hag might be in a position to start taking some damage. We've got some Swordmasters coming up and around the flank. There's not really a lot of dwarfs here to stop this advance. Looks like there are some Dwarf Warriors coming over to help secure those Thunderers and more, um, excuse me, Murderous Prowess popping off all across the field there. You can see the Thunderer is starting to focus on that Death Hag, understanding that she is a big, big danger. While the uh, Organ Guns, looks like one of them is going after Marathi, the other one still targeting those Dark Shards, who uh, looks like Marathi's trying to get a little bit more Winds of Magic out of, which is obviously a good idea. But, uh, yeah, the Gyrocopter is also continuing to poke away at the Death Hag. Obviously, with their armor-piercing damage, they'll do a little bit better. I want to say that they buffed Gyrocopters in the last patch. I think, yeah, they have more missile damage now, which is nice. Uh, looks like a uh, Pit of Shades being dropped here, doing a lot of damage to those Dwarf Warriors. Yeah, uh, obviously, just a unit of Dwarf Warriors isn't the most impactful use of Pit of Shades, but understanding... The, the Dark Elf player just trying to break through here. I might have used that on the Thunders instead, though, just to keep them from firing. As it is, you can see the Thunderers pouring in the fire uh, along with the Gyros into this uh, this Witch Elf here, into this Death Hag. She's not too happy. She's going to flee the field after uh, just getting hit by way too much gunfire, down to less than 300 HP. So, yeah, she is done for. A couple more hits from that Organ Gun, and she might actually just fall over. But, uh, yeah, Marathi's very low on HP now. You can see the balance of power starting to tip as the ranged units for the Dark Elves and the units that have, you know, the actual stopping power are getting taken out. The Harkoneth Executioner is still fighting in the pits here. Obviously, their anti-infantry armor piercing will do quite well. But uh, Marathi, with their anti-large AP, the anti-large does apply against the Rune Lord when he's up on his chair like that. So she might be able to take him out, and that would probably bring the balance power a little bit closer back. But you can see a very nice bomb there dropped on those Harganeth Executioners. 
Most of the executioners have been dealt with. Uh, you can see these guys over chasing those dwarf warriors a little bit. That does allow them to get shot up pretty bad by those thunderers. You can see they're going to last samurai advance a little bit here. Advance into gunfire. And quite a few of them won't even make it into the line there. Meanwhile, Marathi looking for another dive. Yep, she's going to dive one more time on the Rune Lord. Try and finish him off. Bring this balance of power back a little bit. But uh, we'll see. The Dark Riders did come back. Tried to get on those organ guns and shut them down one more time. But the Slayer's right on station to make sure they stayed secure. Unfortunately, these Dark Shards are... Or sorry, the Dread Spears are going to get in here. And, uh, you know, organ gun won't be able to take them. But the Slayers are going to come support and should be able to screen them out relatively well. Meanwhile, Thunder is over here, just picking off Tattered Dread Spears. Honestly, these other Thunders could probably turn and fight now with their armor and melee defense. They'll do just fine. Over here, Dwarf Warriors fighting Dark Shards in melee. The Rune Lord does get taken out by Marathi here and these uh, other supporting troops. That is going to bring the balance power back ever so slightly, but there's still two very healthy groups of Thunderers. Marathi, uh, I don't think she even has. She does have Soul Stealer, but she has used up a lot of Winds of Magic on other spells. If she had been a little bit more patient with her Winds of Magic and just continuously used Soul Stealers on big blobs of Dwarf Infantry to heal herself and to dish out, you know, of course, with the magic, especially with the Rune Lord, you know, up on the, the Anvil, it does give a nice map-wide magic resistance. You know, all these guys, of course, he's dead now, but they would have had a bit of extra magic resistance there. So Soul Stealer is not going to be the most impactful thing in the world, but if you were tried to aggressively snipe the Rune Lord a little bit more and then... You know, just continuously use that Soul Stealer to heal Marathi and also to deal damage to big blobs of dwarf troops. It might have worked out a lot better. So the uh, I'd be curious to see. I don't know how stole, uh, how the damage on Soul Stealer, the damage scaling actually works. But from what I understand, you know, uh, direct damage spells that are meant against single entities that are, I should say, that are better against low model count units, like Soul Stealer. I mean, obviously, Soul Stealer with an area of effect, it's just good to cast on big blobs, but the damage scaling is more efficient on lower model count units. I'd be curious to see if you cast that on the organ guns themselves, if you could actually blow up the artillery pieces, you know, using just Soul Stealer. If that were to be the case, then obviously it would have been better to just spam Soul Stealer. Um, typically when I take Marathi, I only will take that, but we'll talk about that in just a minute here. In terms of the rest of the army breakdown, obviously Dragonback Slayer is helping to secure the Organ Guns in the back line, who did some serious heavy lifting, 134 and 85 kills. Always nice to see the Organ Guns actually perform. You know, you see them, you don't see them super often. They are a, a pretty good unit in some certain matchups. This is definitely one where they can do well. But uh, yeah, they definitely carried the day here. Rune Lord getting taken out was a bit rough, but the Dwarf Infantry able to hold long enough. And the ranged units, 76 and 20 kills each on these Thunderers, both of them getting some XP chevrons. So yeah, good stuff for the Dark Elves. The Harganeth Executioners obviously racked up a lot of kills. Dark Shards really didn't do as much as they needed to, though. 52 on the Death Hag, not bad. I do like that pick here, as long as you can protect her from Missile Fire. I think that was honestly just the biggest, the biggest hurdle. Um, yeah, so let's talk a bit more about the Dark Elves here. Um, Marathi, we can touch on briefly. Depending on what kind of what kind of build you want to take with Marathi, generally I would recommend just for cheapness sake. Um, I usually only run Power of Darkness and Soul Stealer. That does make Marathi quite a bit cheaper. Um, she's still going to be relatively expensive, but Heart Render and Dark Sword, the minus melee defense, it can be very good against the dwarf. So I probably would bring this. Probably would bring Deadly Onslaught as well because Marathi has pretty good stats. She can kind of get in and try and snipe some units out with that Deadly Onslaught active. Um, yeah, so we'd probably keep everything else and just take her in a, a kit like this. It will make her a bit cheaper, and then you just stay focused on using Soul Stealer, basically, as much as you can. You can usually get, like, three or four, um, sometimes more casts of Soul Stealer in a given game. So, uh, that'll give you a lot of self-healing with Marathi and a lot of area of effect damage potential. As for the rest of the army, I definitely think against the dwarves you're going to want at least one, maybe more, Cold One Chariots. These guys have armor-piercing anti-infantry weapon damage, they have a great charge bonus, they have armor-piercing missile damage, which does a ton. Um, with some of the recent changes to Primal Instincts, it's a lot easier to use them. They don't enrage nearly as much, and when they do enrage, they actually get a minor buff, which is not the worst, but still not great for a chariot unit. But just in general, I would say the Cold One Chariots are going to be a unit that you want to use heavily in this matchup because they can punch through the Dwarf front line, get in, uh, run around on their ranged units, and just, you know, disrupt them as well as doing a lot of damage to them. 
I definitely think you want some Cold One Knights in this matchup. Uh, the Harganeth Executioners, honestly, are not terrible, but the Dread Spears, I'm a little bit dubious about. I mean, I guess he just wanted them for the better melee defense than uh, than Bleak Swords, but honestly, Bleak Swords probably are just going to be better here. Um, they will do a little bit of damage, especially if you're if you're spamming spells and getting this uh, minus 15 from Spiteful Conjuration. The Bleak Swords will be able to do a little bit better there. Um, as for other units, I definitely like taking the five units of Dark Shards. I think that's a lot for the Dwarves to have to deal with. Um, you know, some Dark Riders are definitely useful just to try and disrupt the back line a little bit. Um, as for the rest of the army, we are a little bit light on infantry, so maybe we take a fifth Bleak Sword. Maybe we take some Corsairs as well, or, you know, we could always go in another direction. Maybe take like a Feral Manticore just for another monster disruption, and maybe a Bolt Thrower something like that. Ah, there's some different directions that you could go. But uh, just generally, I would say the Cold One Chariots you're going to want to take. If you do take Marathi, I'd probably cheapen out her kit a little bit. Just make her a little bit more simplified. And yeah, the Feral Manticore can also be a decent option for some disruption as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, though. Definitely a fun matchup, and big thanks to Sarmation for posting that game. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.